You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life. No matter your interests. From award-winning business. Love it. And STEM. To performing arts programs. There's a place for you. A place for you. A place for you at UVU. A place to engage. To rise. To succeed. To become. My name is Pat Young. I started my college career at University of Maryland, Baltimore County and finished up at University of Maryland College Park. I currently play for the Ohio Machine. Uh, this is the Under Armour Banshee. It's the uh, mid-level lacrosse cleat. What I like about it is it's got a low cleat feel, but with the protection of a mid to high cleat. I'm usually a guy who likes to protect my ankles, but I don't like to lose the mobility and feel like I'm wearing a heavy cleat. UA Banshee, untouchable, unstoppable. I'm Greg Gorenlian, known as Greg Beast. I played for the New York Lizards. I just retired from the MLL, and I face off for Team USA. An elite level face off man looks for a couple different things. First thing is the pinch points of the head, the flex points, how it wraps around the ball. The second thing you look for is the scoop. Is it rigid enough? And can it help you get an extra couple ground balls? The third thing is you want durability. You don't want to have to go buy a new head every few games, so this head basically encompasses all three of those. The Faceoff Academy put Command X's heads and their prototypes through the grinder. They lasted. They lasted throughout the entire grind. They flexed ex uh, exactly how we wanted them to, so not only were they pliable, not only were they uh, durable, but they were also used in a lot of different facets, so it, it came out with a, a pretty good rating. The UA Command X. Dive under, take over. Founded in 2009, Lacrosse Talk Radio has the most live and up-to-date coverage of the fastest sport on two feet. Whether you're listening to one of our over 200 live youth, high school, collegiate, or professional game broadcasts, or our regional specialty shows, Lacrosse Talk Radio gives you access and insight to your favorite teams and players. Visit us at lacrossetalkradio.com for our broadcast schedules in the Rocky Mountain, tri-state and mid-atlantic regions lacrosse talk radio the official voice of the mcla
I'm Ryan Powell. I'm Brett Hughes. I'm Zach Greer. I'm Brian Silka. We're, We're the, the Stripes. I'm Megan Price. I'm Anthony Kelly. Griffin Halliday. Logan Halliday. And we grow the game. And I grow the game. I grow the game. And we grow the game. And I grow the game. I grow the game. And I grow the game. And I grow the game, baby. And I grow the game. And I grow the game. My name is Pat Young. I started my college career at University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and finished up at University of Maryland College Park. I currently play for the Ohio Machine. The shaft is the Meso, and obviously when you look at it, it's got a really sleek look to it. Black on black is pretty smooth. Feel it, it's not too rigid, got a little bit of a grit to it. It's very durable, but it's pretty light. It's got a little bit of a flex to it, so it puts a little bit more on your shot. UA Meso Composite, balanced, battle tested. Tribal West is the first name in lacrosse out west. For more than 15 years, Tribal West has been gearing up beginners to ballers. Our online store is super easy, and we save you time and money. And team stores, let us do your work. Our deals for both men's and women's MCLA teams are flat out laxtastic. We just made that up. Sublimated unis made in the USA and delivered on time. Tribal West, proud to be family owned and player operated. Tribal West, look good, play better. Here. Well, I do believe it is afternoon here in the Rocky Mountain region. It's a beautiful day in Orem, Utah, on the campus of Utah Valley University. This is the RMLC Championship Tournament presented by Prodigy Networks and available on Lacrosse All-Stars as well as Lacrosse Talk Radio. It's the Lynx and the Ore Diggers coming up in just a moment. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Matthews alongside RMLC Vice President Dave Leach and uh, this afternoon's matchup, uh, the second of two at the uh, Division II level featuring the Lynx and the Ore Diggers, Colorado Mines and CU Denver. And these two teams met in the regular season and in that game, it was a 14-10 win for the Lynx over the School of Mines. And the Lynx are a, an up and coming program here in the RMLC making their first championship tournament appearance. In only their second year in the MCLA. Um, they've gone overall eight and two this season. They have their first national ranking, 22nd. Um, and they are um, one of the f number one seeds in this conference tournament. Uh, meanwhile, the School of Mines has gone uh, six and two overall this year. Um, they have been as high as 28th in the, the ranking, which is not quite in the top 25. We are just about set for action. It's Bo Exton at the faceoff X for the Lynx. Exton out of Culver Military Academy in Fishers, Indiana. Former University of Delaware player. Excellent, solid face-off win. Lynx have possession, easy tic-tac-toe passes, and credit the goal to I don't know because he's not on my roster. Number 17, copied this roster right from the website, so somebody doesn't have it accurate. Mm. We will find out who, uh, who down there may not be wearing the number that we expected them to. I've got a nine, I've got a 44, and I've got a 19, okay? We'll account for those. We'll keep on checking it out and see what happens. But the Lynx out to a quick start here against the Ore Diggers. Exton back at the faceoff X. I wonder if uh, maybe he's number 17 lost his jersey or something and maybe he's wearing a different jersey. Or... That would be my guess. He squares off against Rubenstein for the School of Mines at the X. Exton comes out with another face-off wing. Lazar carries into the upper near far elbow of the box. He'll spin, kick it up top for Tory Welch. Welch out of Valor Christian High School, senior, for this link squad. Feeds the ball far side for Lazar. Lazar on the far side wing, cuts across the top of the box. Looks for the skip pass, loses the ball on the spin. 
It's going to be picked up, and it's Nathan Rizzolo. Great defensive play the other by way. Rizzolo. Nice. And there's Finishes a it score. out. Rizzolo out of Whitefish High School in Whitefish, Montana. Wow, this is not the right roster. We are in trouble with mines. Mm. Yep, you're right. We are in trouble with mines. We're gonna say that, that that name sounds familiar. Yeah. From earlier. Now we're gonna have to go online for our rosters for mines. Yep. Grind at the face-off X. Face-off comes out to Mines. Nice job by the ore diggers. That's Wong, the face-off man for Mines. Turnover for the ore diggers. We're going to have an offside on Mines. So he'll hustle back into the offensive zone or the defensive zone. That's Cameron Wong. Ball up top now. Kate Dick with it for the Lynx. He makes the feed to our unknown commodity. Dick with it. Again, a flag down for an offsides against Colorado Mines. Dick works the ball to the near side. He gives to Exton. Mines has always had a solid roster for a um, good solid 10 years. They've, they've always seemed to make it into the playoffs. Exton tries to bounce one home on the Mines goalkeeper. Tending the goal is Melvin Hayden <laughs> for Colorado Mines. And we've got the ball down. Flag penalty coming up. I like that he waited for uh, the players, uh, the CU Denver players leg to move off of the ball so he could scoop it. It's very uh, gentleman-like play. Didn't want to just jab at the ball under the guy's leg. Mines player waited and scooped it up. 12.48 to play. First quarter, it's one nothing in favor of the Lynx. They've got possession of the ball at the top of the box is Tory Welch. He feeds the middle of the field for Dick. Dick out of Palmer High School in Colorado Springs. There's a step down and a goal for the Lynx. Credit that one to Drew Lazar out of Cheyenne Mountain High School. Lazar is a senior attackman, six foot, 170. Um, had a heck of a season this year with uh, 34 goals and 70 points. Uh, he's been a standout player for them uh, for the last couple years. Ekman returning to the faceoff X. X Dean, I, I, I mean. Ball gets popped out, comes back to Welch. Welch will carry into the offensive side of the field for the Lynx. He'll dodge straight downhill to the far side. Welch has the ball at the top of the box. See, Denver's doing a great job of moving their feet in and out of the crease. Dick with the ball, feeds it all the way up top. Lazar with it. He's already got one today. Fires that one wide to the far side pipe. A little bit of an awkward shot. I feel like Lazar's just warming up. Good defensive play by Mines. Four diggers come out with it. Successful clear. Ball loose on the now he's in just trouble. above the box. Losing possession of it there. Your diggers. CU Denver comes out with it. Welch with it. Makes the feed down low. 
Trying to work it into the middle of the field for Carrasco. Ball comes loose. Good defensive play by number 56 for Mines. Carrasco chases it down on the far side, kicks it back up top for Welch. Welch is marked up defensively by Hoover, so he kicks the ball near side for Garcia. Back to Welch. Now far side for Lazar. Lazar looks to go one-on-one -on -one with Hoover, sends that ball wide of the cage. There for the backup, Carrasco for CU Denver. Mine's gonna need to slide often and early on uh, Lazar. They're starting to figure that out. Getting knocked down in the middle of the field. Lazar missing man, he loses possession, ball comes up. Jack Hardy with the carry. Feeds the ball to the middle of the field for Wong. Wong moves it along to the far side wing and gets it back. And then it gets kicked up to the top for Harris. Harris feeds it for Perkins. Perkins will set up at the top of the box, marked up defensively by Michael Martinez, Mullen High School product. Work to Garrett Broussard. He dodges downhill, sends one high to high, an easy save there for Adam Rosberg. Rosberg, the senior goalkeeper, also out of Mullen High School. Working the ball into the offensive zone is Lazar. Feed comes to the middle of the field all alone, and a big save by the goalkeeper. Nice work there between the pipes for Melvin. Feet comes out to the far side. Clearing pass, worked up to midfield for Robert Harris. He's gonna move the ball along for D'Esposito. Ball works down low now, behind goal line extended. Through Ricky and all the way back around to the top now for D'Esposito. He's gonna set up at the top of the box, marked up defensively by Elliott Smith. D'Esposito moves the ball along through Ricky, now behind the cage. That's Cameron Wong. He gets inside, tries to bounce one home. Cameron is a big boy on the inside there. Wong, That's six, they say six foot above 60, I say no way. <laughs> Ball works back to the top for D'Esposito. D'Esposito's gonna be marked up defensively by Smith. He'll take Smith one-on-one. -on -one. Here comes the slide. Feed goes back to Wong behind the cage. He works the ball above goal line, extended into the cross of Culhane. Culhane fires one wide of the cage. Ricky there for the backup. Ricky will restart. 8.23 to play here in the first. Our score, Denver two, Mines one. It's Coach Larson's first year with Mines. Uh, it's also his first uh, head coaching opportunity. He's a high school assistant coach. Took the step up this year. He's done a great job. His team's in the playoffs. Ricky fires one high to high. That one ends up just over the crossbar. It's gonna be backed up by Wong. Mines restarts, trailing by one, 7.50 to play quarter number one. It's the RMLC Championship Tournament presented by Prodigy Networks, available on Lacrosse All-Stars, as well as Lacrosse Talk Radio. CU Denver comes up with the ball, working it in to the offensive zone is Elliott Smith. Smith will work back to the far side of the field. He's got Jack Hardy in tow. Feeds it up to the top and it works all the way over to the near side for Exton. Exton's gonna carry to the middle of the field. Zyla in tow. Feed goes far side. Ball works all the way to the top. Near side for Welch, back far side now for Lazar. Lazar tries to cut across the middle, ends up making a feed down low. That pass gets away from Trevor Carrasco out of bounds. Ball's gonna belong to Mines. Hayden. Hayden 
Martin Melvin. Carries the ball up the center of the field for Mines. He'll stop just shy of midfield, makes the feed across the top and over the midfield stripe for Broussard. Broussard feeds inside, shot, save made. Rosberg on the save. And the chase. Nice hustle by Rosberg. Shot was by D'Esposito. 6.20 left to play, first quarter. Mines with a, er, Mines, CU Denver, the Lynx with a two to one lead. Watch at the top of the box now for the Lynx. He'll feed Lazar. Lazar's going to carry back to the near side. There's one rings off the pipe by Exton. It's going to come all the way back up to midfield. Over and back. Loose ball. They're going to let him play on. It's going to be scooped up by the Lynx. I think because that rebound was off of a shot, there's no over and back. That's correct. I know my rule book. <laughs> takes me takes my brain a while to catch up with the, the whole thought process, but I know the rule book. Well, that pass got away. Yeah, that should be Heading over and back. The other way is Brett Culhane. But, but since he got possession, they didn't call the over and back. Right. No over and back because mine's ended up with possession. Ball works down low behind goal line extended for Wong. He's marked up defensively by Tripp. Tripp played his flag down for offside. Cross at Golden. And they're going to throw it away. Pass intended for Ricky. The Lynx will take 30 seconds for an offside penalty here. That'll give the ore diggers an opportunity. That is a lot of really smart kids down below us and to our right. Well, it is the best engineering school in the country, uh, decided by a lot of those sorts of uh, magazines and publications that decide such things. And interestingly enough, they've built a nice athletic program they have out it. of a bunch of smart kids. The, uh, the football team's always a competing entity at the Division II level. The basketball team uh, also competes very well. Baseball's not bad. Lacrosse is doing all right. They made a lot of investments there at the, on that campus, building new turf fields and uh, lights and stadiums. Uh, I believe the football team has their own practice stadium. Jack Hardy's pass gets away from him. Ends up chasing it down on the far side. Feeds comes to the middle of the field. Down oh, low what a Ricky. handle. What a great job by Ricky. Ricky mm -hmm. looks, tries to fire inside far pipe, and it goes wide of the cage out of bounds. There for the backup is Culhane. 427 to play. A beautiful day over here in the valley. 78 degrees at game time, looking to climb to about 82. Who knew I'd be come out here and be able to get my son on? <laughs> ball works behind the cage on an errant pass. 50-50 ground ball along the end line. It's going to be scooped up by Culhane for Mines. He gets away from his defender, feeds the top of the box, the step down, and the shot goes too high. Hardy. Had the look. Mines is just settling into this game. I think they're a little rattled. They know they're playing a, a, a tough opponent. And they might be in their heads a little bit. They're just setting, settling in. They're going to get some better quality shots, hopefully. There's Ricky. Nice save, Rosberg. Rosberg will start the clear. For CU Denver. And they go by CUD rather than UCD now, don't they? They rather do. Rather than the University of Colorado Denver, it's uh, CUD. Yeah, I think there's some branding issues there with the whole CU system. You know, it's called CU, and then uh, their logos, it's the University of Colorado, so it's always a little confusing. And then you've got all these multiple campuses, and they use different names and branding yeah you got cu denver cu boulder but then you got uccs yeah <laughs> and then you have uh the the uc health system and uh cu anschutz their university hospital yeah they'll figure it out yeah they'll figure it out cu denver with the ball dodging downhill far side is dick his pass doesn't get through it's batted down by my by mines mm. trying to scoop it up on the far side is Zyla. 
He'll get called for a withholding and the ball's gonna be turned over to the Lynx. Sparse crowd right now, but I would look for it to fill in substantially for our 4 p.m. And, and 7 p.m. game. Shot goes wide off the cross of Lazar. Strong left-hand shot by Lazar. He's, he's getting some today. He's after it. Mine's, uh, the ore diggers are going to have a, uh, a lot on their hands dealing with him today. Top of the box, Welch. Feeds across for Lazar. It's good D. Picked up by Zyla. Lazar goes high to high inside the upper left 90 and scores. Three to one links. Mines is really going to have to slide early and often on him. That was that slide was not fast enough. Uh, that is the kind of shot that that is okay to give to a player on the outside, about 15 yards out from the goal at an angle. Um, but you got to slide a lot sooner to keep that that shot off. Nice look at our instant replay there. 2.16 left to play in the first. Three to one, our score. I'm Dan Matthews, he's Dave Leach. Glad you've tuned us in, whether it's on Lacrosse Talk Radio or the video portion of our broadcast on Lacrosse All-Stars. Face-off win for Exton. He makes it look so easy, doesn't he? Exton is a true face-off specialist in the MCLA. Possibly one of the better ones in the country. And then stays on and pretty much plays both ways. He does. Exton dodges downhill, fires one wide of the cage. Nice look for Exton. It's deceivingly fast. At 5'9", 180 pounds. Across the top is Lazar. Nice slide there defensively by Mines. Good. <laughs> Great way to pick that ball out the air by uh, number 20, Nathan Lambert. Wong unable to control the ball at goal line extended. Unable to be bailed out by Dickey. Ball scooped up by the Lynx, fed to Rosberg. He'll start the clear by working it up top. Another one of those that uh, doesn't have the right jersey. <laughs> They're a young program. Ball works downhill. Welch feeds inside. 50-50 ground ball. It's going to be scooped up by Mines. We'll head the other direction. Broussard loses control. It's going to be scooped up by Lambert. He'll carry it across midfield. That pass is going to get deflected. Ricky can't come up with it. He'll chase it to the near sideline. Stop it and scoop it. He's going to be picked up defensively by Vizina. Makes the feed to the top of the box. Hardy. Hardy's going to carry outside and set up the offense. 25 seconds left to play first quarter. Long can't get inside. Ball comes loose. It's going to be scooped up by the Lynx. Rosberg lost sight of the ball. He'll chase it down behind the cage. Five seconds remains. Launches the ball down the field. Two seconds, one. That's the end of the first period of play here on Lacrosse Talk Radio and Lacrosse All Star. It's the RMLC tournament presented by Prodigy Media. I'm Eric Law, I went to the University of Denver and I played professional lacrosse for the Denver Outlaws. This is the UA Command 2.0. I really like the new design of the thinner scoop at the top to help with ground balls uh, and, and the same thing in the back with the flare to help with ground balls as well. Uh, the pocket, it, it forms just a nice easy pocket right in the middle. Um, I also love how light it is. We've been in the sun all day. It still doesn't get that soupy, bendy feeling. Um, also, what I really like the new addition of is the uh, side rail pockets for the shooters which doesn't go right in there, which I think uh, is a brilliant design. You only
only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life. No matter your interests. From award-winning business. And STEM. To performing arts programs. There's a place for you. A place for you. A place for you at UVU. A place to engage. To rise. To succeed. To become. Welcome back to Clyde Field at Utah Valley University. It's the RMLC Division II Championships. It's a semifinal matchup between the Lynx of CU Denver and the Ore Diggers of the Colorado School of Mines. And right now it's the Lynx. Three to one over Mines, a, a fast first period, a well played first period for both programs, Dave. Absolutely. And uh, CU Denver just came out hot, scoring in the first five seconds of the game. Uh, really off the, the superb face-off work of Bo Exton. Uh, expect to continue to see that throughout the game. Bo is, uh, is a force. So we're just about set to start the second period. Beautiful day. So it looks like senior attackman uh, Ryan Dodd for CU Denver is wearing number 17 today instead of 20. And Patrick Tom, junior LSM, is wearing 37 instead of 77. Kids will be kids. They lost their jerseys. Uh, something happened. <laughs> no, I got confirmation. They lost their jerseys. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Ball works. Far side for Mines. Off the face off. They've got the first possession. Bouncer goes wide at the cage. Garrett Broussard with the shot. Ball comes to the top. Hardy with it. Feeds to Epstein. Back to Hardy. Hardy dodges down the far side, oh. or near side. Sorry about that. Ball ends up at the cross of Ricky. He's looking for Broussard inside. Hardy now has it. Good hard ride by the defenseman, Joe Hall. There's a goal on the inside. Credit that one to Broussard. I'd say that was assisted by number 10, Cardi. Jack Hardy. He had a nice rip from the top of the box, bounced off the goalie, and uh, Broussard was able to finish it. And put themselves within one. Just a note for everybody uh, at halftime. You will see nothing but commercials. That's our time to take a break. When you call four games in a day, you, you get the liberty of taking that break. So all commercials all the time at the half. Still 14 minutes away from that. Lots of great lacrosse action here at Utah Valley. Exton just ma has mastered the face off. Had time there to look for his teammate. Still pull it out without actually withholding the ball. That's what the refs want to see. They want to see move the ball quickly. Welch with it up top now. He's going to feed the near side wing. That's Dodd. Ooh, five hole. What a shot. No angle right between the goalie's legs. Doubling up now on mines. Get a look at the replay. Jump shot by Welch. Right there. And not a lot Hugging of space the between the legs either. He, the goalie was doing a good job closing it off. It Just was. found a tiny little box. Snuck that one in. Terrific shot. By a senior midi. 6'3", 187 pounds from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Tori Welch. Went to Christian Valor. No, that would be Valor Christian. Ah, Valor Christian. Christian Valor. 
Exton with another face-off win. Uh, amazing that this is a, a two-goal game, quite frankly, with the way Exton's dominating the face-off facts. Split there, makes the feed, gets the ball back and scores. What a play. Lazar and Exton. That will be a replay worth picking apart, folks. If they continue with that two-man game, that's going to be deadly all weekend. Yeah, he gets, the give and go. Dodge, gets the give and go, and, and he's all alone, three yeah. yards above the crease. And Exton, just to have that, that killer instinct, just to know, uh, you know, give, give that ball up and then go right to the cage, and his teammate knew he was there. He, he knew that Bo would have that instinct. I think our cameramen are getting seasick up here on this lift. No, nah, these guys are professionals. Good thing it's not a windy day. Another face-off W for the Lynx. Indeed. Lazar with the carry into the box. He's going to pull it out on the near side. 17 men deep on the Lynx roster. Finishing at the top of their division this season. Um, really, that's a division that could be owned for a long time by, by the Lynx and, and Metro. Um, as, as Coach Hunter rebuilds the program at Metro and uh, as the, the growth of the program at, at CU Denver under John Harris continues. That pass gets away behind the cage. It's out of bounds. I call it, that was a shot. Okay. There for the backup was Carrasco. What a toe drag, bounce shot, rebound, save saves. Huge saves made by Melvin. Should be a free clear there, but it is not. That was definitely some goalie interference there. Aiden Melvin standing on his head there. Great clear. Two quick saves. The Epstein feeds the ball into the offensive zone. Now mine should be a little bit more patient with this ball. Ball Allowing works all the way up to the top. Getting their personnel in. The Epstein goes far side with it to Ricky. Ricky picked up defensively by Vizina. Swings all the way around to Colhane. Colhane gets inside, bounces one in. So goaltender Rosberg makes the save. Mines gets the rebound. Ball comes all the way to the top. That's Harris. Harris swings, spins, mm. feeds Broussard. Broussard can't field it cleanly. Spins off his defender, gets to the inside, loses the ball. Kicks it over to Harris. Harris loses it. Ricky tries to kick it away. Nice job there by Vizina. And it's going to be scooped up by Martinez. Martinez feeds the middle of the field. Exton slips and falls at midfield, keeps the ball in his cross, gets across midfield. Took a hard hit to the ribs. He's holding his chest right now. He's going to come off for just a minute, catch his breath. Makes the feed for Lazar. Lazar on the near side wing, 10.45 to play, first half. It's 5-2 links over Mines. Lazar makes the feed up top. Welch has it. He'll give it back to Lazar on the near side. Lazar looks to go one-on-one -on -one with Harris. Cuts to the inside, keeps his head up. Tries to make the feed inside. That ball's loose in front of the cage. It's going to be scooped up by Epstein. Lost. Now scooped up by absolutely nobody. Coming out of the pile with the ball, though, is Hone. Carter Hone scoops it, makes the feed across midfield. It's a nice job. Culhane carries into the box, loses possession of the ball. Or diggers are able to maintain possession. Zyla comes up with it. He's going to feed Hardy. Or diggers will make their substitutions. Hardy shot, save made by Rosberg. It's a great shot on the run. Just needs to change that plane. Feet comes up for Ian Kalazi. Ian, the younger brother of AJ. AJ played his collegiate ball at the University of Colorado. Ball works into the box. Getting the touch was Drew Lazar. Lazar's going to feed the top for Garcia. 
Garcia, another product out of the Denver Public Schools, went to Denver South High School. Ball work behind the cage. That's a nice lift and great defensive work there by Honeshell. Four mines. Ball ends up out of bounds and it's going to belong to CU Denver. Ball stays with CU Denver. 8.45 to play. First half, it's 5 2. Don't forget, coming up next here at the RMLC tournament will be the University of Utah taking on Colorado State. There's a BT beer. Save made by Melvin. Ball way up in the air. It's going to come loose and be scooped up by Garcia at the top of the box <laughs> inside the upper left elbow. They'll work the ball to midfield, the middle of the field. Lazar looks to go on on one with his defender, Hoover. Decides to pull the ball back out. Exton, I believe, still on the sidelines. Garcia with the ball in the middle of the field for the Lynx. He'll carry across the top of the box. His team leading by three, loses the ball as he heads toward the cage. Ball comes loose. Nice hustle there. Scooped up by Dodd. Dodd feeds it up top for Lazar. Lazar gets free, goes low to low. The ball goes wide of the cage. There for the backup, Carrasco. Carrasco will reboot the offense from the end line. He'll feed Dodd. Dodd with the feed inside, not able to hang on to it was Garcia. What a great off-ball cut. Couldn't come up with the pass cleanly. We're heading the other direction with the carry is Wong. He's going to rocket one. That one's going to go off the pipe over and back. Is not going to be called because it's a shot, but it's going to be scooped up anyway by Dodd for CU Denver. Dodd will make the feed to Welch coming through the box. Welch is going to go straight to the cage, carry it down to goal line extended. Welch circles the cage, comes back above the far side. He'll set it up outside the box and feed it up top for Smith. Lynx are doing a great job at, uh, uh, you know, j just setting the tempo. Uh, they're not allowing Mines to, to really set the play of this game at all. Mines is absolutely plain reactive. Yeah, talking to Coach Harris, there's a, not sure what that was. That was just kind of a feed into the crease, I yeah. guess. Um, but talking to Coach Harris before the game, he wanted to create a, a steady yet mellow tempo to this game because um, he, he feels that his team can win this game and then would have an opportunity against uh, Montana State tomorrow morning. So he wants his kids to not be gassed. And it's paying off for him. Got a whistle on the field and a flag down. And we have a timeout for Mines and Laundry on the field. This is the RMLC Championships presented by Prodigy Networks, available on Lacrosse All-Stars and Lacrosse Talk Radio. My name is Pat Young. I started my college career at University of Maryland, Baltimore County and finished up at University of Maryland College Park. I currently play for the Ohio Machine. Uh, this is the Under Armour Banshee. It's the uh, mid-level lacrosse cleat. What I like about it is it's got a low cleat feel, but with the protection of a mid to high cleat. I'm usually a guy who likes to protect my ankles, but I don't like to lose the mobility and feel like I'm wearing a heavy cleat. UA Banshee, untouchable, unstoppable.
back to Orem, Utah, everybody. I'm Dan Matthews. He's Dave Leach. This is the RMLC Division II semifinal featuring the CU Denver Lynx and the Colorado School of Mines. Mines under first year head coach Dax Larson. Jonathan Harris, the leader of this Lynx squad, and a, a great job, really, by both coaches um, in, in continu a, continuing a tradition of strong play at Mines, um, but building a tradition. Uh, at CU Denver. It's Drew Larson, isn't Drew it? Drew Larson, I'm sorry. That's all right. I, I know wasn't a Dax sure I was. Larson too. You're right. Uh, and his brother was a uh, standout player for CSU. Dan Larson, I believe his name. Mm -hmm. All American. And uh, Dan and Drew got to play together for a year at Fort Lewis. Dan transferred uh, down there to Durango. Ball works across the top of the box. Nice job by Mo Mines on the movement. Spin, shot, that one doesn't get Great. through. It hits the defender out front. That was trip. Ball loose out in front of the goaltender, Rosberg. It's scooped up by trip. He loses possession. Scooped up by Ricky. Five and a half to play first half. Ricky makes the feed for Evan Wong. He'll scoop it up. Feedback across the top for Jack Hardy. Hardy sends it behind the cage for Wong. Now far side GLE for Ricky. He can't come up with it. Ball's loose in the corner, scooped up by the Lynx. Ball ends up out of bounds. Off Vizina. Vizina playing his high school ball at Highlands Ranch High School. Ball works back through the top. Perkins. Works it through Culhane and it swings all the way back around to the top of the box for Perkins. Hardy gets inside, gets the hands free, but not quite. The shot goes wide. Good backup by Wong on that one. <laughs> Wong will carry behind the cage. Picked up defensively by Tripp. Makes the feet up top for Perkins. Perkins kicks it to the middle of the field for D. Epstein. Ricky on the far side wing kicks it back. Now to Hardy. Ricky on the off ball cut. He gets free, gets inside, down to goal line extended, loses the ball, scoops it up behind the cage. It's one thing that Mines has surprisingly been always good at is just ground balls. That shot goes wide. On the cross of Culhane. And they continue today. Just solid ground balls. You would think that, that a group of engineers would be really good at fundamentals. Yeah. They know Wong. the angles. and Wong with the ball behind the cage. It's getting pounded heavy by Kalesi. Ball works near side wing. The Epstein. For Hardy, Hardy carries it outside the box. 3.35 to play in the first half. Ricky has the ball, four mines, far side, kicks it to Wong at X. Wong spins, feeds Hardy near side. Hardy tries to go near side pipe and an easy okay. save for Rosberg. Mine is going to have to work a lot harder for goals than that. They're doing a good job of moving their feet. Uh, they just need to keep their head up and look for each other. Dick with the carry across midfield. Gets the touch for the Lynx. They'll set the offense with three minutes to play first half, leading five to two. Shots are even at 11 each. Welch gets the feed up top from Lazar. Welch wants that far side. He's going to look to go one on one with Zyla. Ops to spin, kicks it back up top for Lazar. Lazar with a shorty on him. That's Robert Harris. Lazar beats Harris to the left side, steps down, fires the shot. That one goes over the crossbar, out of bounds. Back up there by Dodd. Back up by C. Denver.
Dodd with the ball. Great defensive the play. Cage. Yeah, that's the second great play 56. on defense by Honshell. Freshman. Six foot 180. Goaltender. Melvin walking it up. Four mines. When I say walking, he was walking. He picks up ahead of steam. He's going across midfield. He's going to carry it into the box and get the touch. Not sure what he wants to do. Makes the feed across for Ricky. Ricky can't come up with the pass. He'll scoop it up off the turf, though. Bazina on him defensively. Ball worked to the middle of the field. That pass gets away from its intended target. Wong can't come up with it. Another terrific ground ball by Mines. Yeah, Culhane scoops that one and gives it to Wong. Wong kicks it all the way up top for Harris. Feed goes far side GLE for Dickey and now behind the cage for Wong. It's a big kid, Wong, using his body. Can't get above GLE. Nice job defensively there by Martinez. Pass across the top. Intended for Evan Wong gets away. One minute left in the first half. CU Denver has the ball in the final minute of play here in the first half. It is five to two. Links with the lead. And we're going to have a timeout on the field for Jonathan Harris and his CU Denver Links. We'll be back right after this. I'm Greg Gurenlian, known as Greg Beast. I played for the New York Lizards. I just retired from the MLL, and I face off for Team USA. An elite level face off man looks for a couple different things. The first thing is the pinch points of the head, the flex points, how it wraps around the ball. The second thing you look for is the scoop. Is it rigid enough? And can it help you get an extra couple ground balls? The third thing is you want durability. You don't want to have to go buy a new head every few games. So this head basically encompasses all three of those. The Faceoff Academy put Command X's heads and their prototypes through the grinder. They lasted. They lasted throughout the entire grind. They flexed ex uh, exactly how we wanted them to. So not only were they pliable, not only were they uh, durable, but they were also used in a lot of different facets. So it, it came out with a, a pretty good rating. The UA Command X. Dive under, take over. Welcome back to Clyde Field at Utah Valley University. It's 5 2 CU Denver with the lead. 48 seconds left before half. Let's see what Coach Jonathan Harris drew up in the huddle for the Lynx. Ball's going to work behind the cage through Carrasco over to the far side for Marlum. Warlum. Orlam kicks it to the far side wing for Exton. Exton up top for Welch. Welch feeds near side. Lazar with it on the near side. Feeds Dodd. 30 seconds left to play. First half. Very patient possession. You can hear the coaches faintly in the background. Lazar's. Feed intended for Exton, gets away, rolls out of bounds on the far side. So, a lot of patience for a lot of nothing. You know, Exton's really got to handle that pass. That, that wasn't that, that terrible. That was, uh, he's a better player than that. He can get that. Ricky gets one off. Rosberg makes the save. Three seconds left. Two, one. And that will be the end of the first half. CU Denver will carry a three goal lead into halftime. These are the RMLC championships. Presented, be, presented by 
Prodigy Networks, available on Lacrosse All-Stars and Lacrosse Talk Radio. We'll be back in about 10 minutes with the second half. Tribal West is the first name in lacrosse out west. For more than 15 years, Tribal West has been gearing up beginners to ballers. Our online store is super easy, and we save you time and money. And team stores, let us do your work. Our deals for both men's and women's MCLA teams are flat out laxtastic. We just made that up. Sublimated unis, made in the USA, and delivered on time. Tribal West, proud to be family owned and player operated. Tribal West, look good, play better.
I'm Eric Law. I went to the University of Denver and I played professional lacrosse for the Denver Outlaws. This is the UA Command 2.0. I really like the new design of the thinner scoop at the top to help with ground balls uh, and, and the same thing in the back with the flare to help with ground balls as well. Uh, the pocket, it, it forms us a nice easy pocket right in the middle. Um, I also love how light it is. We've been in the sun all day. It still doesn't get that soupy, bendy feeling. Um, also, what I really like the new addition of is the uh, side rail pockets for the shooters, which doesn't go right in there, which I think uh, is a brilliant design. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests. From award-winning business and STEM to performing arts programs, there's a place for you. A place for you. A place for you at UVU. A place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. My name is Pat Young. I started my college career at University of Maryland, Baltimore County and finished up at University of Maryland College Park. I currently play for the Ohio Machine. Uh, this is the Under Armour Banshee. It's the uh, mid-level lacrosse cleat. What I like about it is it's got a low cleat feel, but with the protection of a mid to high cleat. I'm usually a guy who likes to protect my ankles, but I don't like to lose the mobility and feel like I'm wearing a heavy cleat. UA Banshee, untouchable, unstoppable. Clyde Field, Utah Valley University, CU Denver Lynx, and the Colorado Mines or Diggers. It's a 5-2 game at halftime here at the RMLC Championship Tournament in Orem, Utah. I'm Dan Matthews alongside Dave Leach. I want to thank Rick Cladis and his entire Prodigy crew for the great work being done here on this coverage of the uh, RMLC Championship Tournament. Just about set for the second half here. Sun has peaked behind the clouds a little bit. It's a beautiful day though here in Orem. Orem about uh, 25 minutes, 25 miles south of downtown Salt Lake City. The Rocky Mountains on the wrong side here in Utah. Face off W is gonna go to Bo Exton and he's gonna throw it away. So. That was a mental error by Exton. Just didn't quite have his man ready for it on the near side. The Epstein will start with possession for the ore diggers. And we were talking about saves and the uh, 
See your Denver goaltender, Rosberg, has been on fire. I think that's nine tally marks down there for Rosberg in the first half. Yeah, talking to the coaches at halftime, uh, the Mines head coach, Drew Larson, told me uh, really he's pretty happy with the way his team is playing. Um, he would just like to see some more bounce shots. Um, on the other side, CU Denver, uh, they, they also like the way they're playing, and uh, they just want to win some more ground balls. And that's one thing we have seen. The Mines has been dominating on ground balls. Ball works behind goal line extended for Wong. Wong's going to feed that far side. Culhane has it. Ball works to the top. Making the feed to the inside. There's a bouncer. It goes wide of the cage. Too much finesse on that shot by Diepstein. Or Diesposito. I am so sorry. Diesposito. I don't know where I came up with Diepstein. Ball works to the top. I apologize to the Diesposito family. Ball works down low. Culhane's going to. Chase it down for Mines. Just underway here in the second half. It's a 5-2 game. Wong gets above goal line extended. Fires a shot wide of the cage. Wong's looking to beat his, his man top side like that. And uh, CUD is not going to give it up easy. Wong's going to switch spots at attack. He'll go back down low. Coming up top is Broussard. Feed comes to Hardy. Hardy, bouncer wide of the cage. And just like that, they're listening to their coach. We've seen two or three bounce shots already this quarter. Wong there for the backup. Wong not terribly unnimble for a large man. Does a nice job getting above GLE. He uses his body and size to his advantage. Esposito feeds Wong just above GLE. Nice move by Esposito. Ricky on the backside gets the ball off the shot on the rebound. Ball comes out up top. Spoke to Ricky at halftime. Broussard, save made Rosberg. I spoke to Ricky at halftime and uh, he was disappointed in the way he's played. He wants to contribute more. So I would look for him to be a bigger role in the second half. He wants it, he's hungry. It's a nice pick by Kalezi. Kalezi's pass, though, intended for Carrasco. Gets away out of bounds. Get the ball back to Mines. And that's a key that uh, John Harris from CU Denver mentioned to me. Uh, he wants to see a settled play. He wants to see them stop forcing the ball. And uh, they're not listening so far. <laughs> nice ambient audio coming from the, the sidelines. Ball works in. To the offensive zone. Feed across for Wong is batted down. Great defensive play. Martinez, and it's scooped up by Rosberg. We're heading the other direction. Welch has it in his cross for the Lynx. See, Denver needs to settle this, get their personnel out. Flip to Lazar. He'll carry to the far side of the field. Picked up defensively by Hoover. Almost tried a hidden ball trick there. Feet comes back up top to Welch, now near side. Exton with it. Feeds inside, what a feed from Exton inside to Carrasco. That makes the score six to two. That Mines defender, number one there, he knows Bo wants to go topside and he needs to stop that from happening. Yeah, that's Robert Harris out of Hingham High School in Hingham, Massachusetts. Mine's one of the, the few rosters uh, around the MCLA that, that draws from a lot of different places because of the institution that it is. CU Boulder is another one. Um, surprised to see Exton um, out of Indiana on this CU Denver roster. Would love to know the story behind what brought him here. Um, I know he's a Division I transfer, but to go from Division I to going to school in, in a city that you didn't grow up in, um, if you're Bo Exton, to 
leave Indiana, go back east, and then come all the way out west to, to Colorado, is, there's got to be an interesting story behind that process. I have spoken to Bo about that, and, and I do know that he really came to Colorado for Colorado. For the lifestyle. He wanted to be in Denver. Loves the mountains, loves uh, the, the outdoor lifestyle. Um, and wasn't really planning on playing lacrosse. He joined this team uh, because some friends asked him to, and he rediscovered that love of the game and love of this team. He really does love this team and, and these guys. Hawthorne lost the ball. Mines ends up scooping it up anyway. We're heading the other direction. Perkins with it, makes the feed Bit of a high hit. We've got a flag down. Could definitely hear the helmet from across the field. That's going to be a, a slash call. Yeah, Lazar's going to come off. Lazar came into the weekend with 34 goals and 24 assists on the season. In the game, he's got two more goals, call it 36 on the season. That's a great season for anybody. The illegal body check. Mines will have a 60 second man advantage. 10 11 to play here in the third quarter. See you, Denver, with the only goal here in the second half. They've extended their lead to four at 6 2. Lazar leads this team in shots taken today. Uh, looks like nine shots. And his other closest teammate has maybe Hardy. three. Hardy goes low to low, and Rosberg deflects it. Ricky will scoop it up on the near side wing. Feeds it up top for Perkins. Perkins is going to hit the middle of the field. Oh. There's a nice backhander by Wong. Standing five yards above the crease. Wong just backhands it in. Call that a Canadian lefty. That makes our score 6-3. Nice look at the replay there. Yeah, just shovels it in. Inside 10 minutes to play third quarter. Ball's being placed. So far, nice jobs done by our officiating crews here at the RMLC tournament. I know we've got some guys out from Colorado that made the trip over the Rockies to officiate this weekend. All at the top of the box. It's 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 4 o'clock on the East Coast. Shameless plug for Lacrosse Talk Radio. Don't forget to tune in tonight. We've got uh, NCAA Division I action on our Mid Atlantic station. Actually, that's going to be on our main station, I bet. All up top now. It's Drexel in Delaware. Our main lacrosse talk radio station, Jared Welsh and Rocco Granado will have the call. There's a shot into the upper right 90. A great look there from Kate Dick out of Palmer High School. Number 23 for Mines really played that well. Esposito. It prevented that uh, that topside sweep there that that he was going for. Uh, but then he got it got low and just ripped it. That slide wasn't there fast enough. All right, my microphone moved. Not sure. We heard you. All right. For better or worse. <laughs> Thank you. Exton's gonna go back to the face off where he has absolutely dominated face-off play today. He had uh, eight face-off wins in the first half. That's another one to add to his tally. Shot goes wide by Exum. A nice effort by Melvin, but he's not quite there. Nice chase there by Carrasco. Yeah, he was trying to race two guys. 
Dodd feeds the ball up top on the restart for Lazar. Lazar shakes, bakes, shoots wide of the cage. Another one there. Mine's number three. He's got to keep him low. Cut off that top side. You know that's where he wants to go. It opens up the angle. Right, here's another one. Oh. Lazar, toe drag, bounce shot, save made Melvin. Ball loose out in front of the cage, trying to bat it into the cage. Out in front was Lazar. Chase is going to go to Exton. He'll restart for the Lynx. Ball comes up top. There's a shot, save Melvin. Getting run over at the top of the box. Was Lazar. Excellent comes, clear. Yeah, feet comes inside and gets thrown over. Turnover. That's Thom. He makes the feed to the middle of the field for Smith. Smith carries into the offensive side of the field. Works it for Lazar. Lazar's got Welch coming through the bench. Welch is going to make the feed down low. Orland has the ball near side. The Lynx are looking a little bit tired. Lambert chasing Warlam around. Switch comes defensively. Broussard, the ball gets fed far side now for Dodd. Dodd's going to go one on one. Gets to the inside, cuts down goal line extended to the near side of the field. Tries to make the feed for Lazar. Lazar picks the ball up. Toe drag ends up on his tail. Flag comes down. Lazar's going to back away from everything. Little chippiness there. Good, hard, aggressive play by both teams. Okay. So Mines is going to go man down. Oh, see, Mines will be down one minute. It's a tough call. Lazar there was uh, shaking and baking, and 13 is just trying to keep up with him. Got wrapped up in his in his feet, kind of knocked him over. Carter Hone. He spent some time in the sin bin. Ball comes up top. Dick feeds Welch. Ball works near side now down low. Skip pass. Great defensive play. Stepping in the crease were the Lynx. That'll give the ball to Melvin. Melvin, long clearing pass. It's Dickey, or Ricky. Down Ricky the attack. Heads down behind goal line extended, pulls the ball out to the near side wing. Makes the feet up top for Harris. Hines playing one man short. Pass behind the cage intended for Wong. He'll try to chase it down far side. Can't get there, out of bounds. It'll be Link's ball. 6-10 left to play here in the third. It's seven to three. Favor of CU Denver. Can the University of Colorado school system advance two teams to the championship games tomorrow? We'll find out later tonight when the University of Colorado takes on Brigham Young. In the meantime, here the Lynx have business to do if they're to make their appearance. What a great look and a bouncer. Warlam converts on the pass from Lazar. It was a great skip pass across the crease and a great change of planes by Warlam to take that ball down low behind the goalie. Absolutely. Cross crease pass. Had to kind of wrangle it. And once he did, simple little drop goal. That makes our score 8 3 with 5.45 left to play. You know, when you're that close to the net there, you, you really don't need to put a whole lot of power on it. You just got to put it on net. That was a good, smart play. Third quarter here at Utah Valley University. Set up the face-off X. Quick whistle, procedure, give the ball to Mines. Mm -hmm. X didn't jump that one. Big old wrap check from X on the restart. Mines works the ball into the offensive zone. What a strip takeaway. by 19, Drew Lazar. Lazar does a great job on the takeaway, then throws the ball away intended for Exton. 
and unable to come up with it. It deflected off of the cross of Mines, but they're going to get the ball. They didn't see it. Mines is already setting into the defensive zone, but the referees have awarded them the ball. It's funny because the players tell the whole story, and, and Logan Hoover knew that he had touched it on its way out of bounds, and he's backing up to play defense, yet the officials give the ball to Mines. Bad turnover there, ball Don don't. with the ground ball. As I've been told by my son, ball don't lie. <laughs> it immediately goes back to CU Denver in the lengths. Half possession, Exton feeds Welch coming through the box. Inside five minutes to play third quarter. Lynx with a five goal lead. Mines has had a lot of shots, a lot of opportunity, just haven't been able to convert. Ball carried behind the cage by Dick. Chasing him is Broussard. Dick gets top side, takes the shot, it goes wide right there on the end line. Is Carrasco. Broussard's just got to stay with him there. He, he's going for the takeaway check. Uh, at that instance, you just need to, to, to stay with him, push him out. Don't give him that shot. Dodd with the ball on the far side. Works at top side. across the top of the box now for Dick. He's going to bring it down the near side. Spins and goes back up top. Patient possession here for CU Denver. Broussard is such a solid defensive player. And if he just stays with the, the solid fundamental mechanics he, he plays with, he, he'll be a better defensive uh, help for his team. Right now he's kind of going for these, these hero checks, these Raps checks, trying to make something happen for his team. And Exton's going to come spend some time in the sin bin. A high hit, probably getting called for the cross check. Hands were spread on the cross. He knew it. I mean, as soon as it happened, he just started walking toward the sin bin. He'll take a knee. Referee's probably right now talking about uh, how much time they're going to give him. Interesting calls. Thought we were getting a cross check. Ended up with two conduct penalties. Both players locked in. We'll play five on five lacrosse for 30 seconds. Three and a half to play here in the third. Again, Matthews. He's Dave Leach. So they man up for two minutes? Well, we or, had, no, we had, uh, oh, we had uh, uh, coincidentals. Coincidental 30 seconds, both locked in on uh, conduct penalties. Yeah, from where we are, I can't really see who's in the box. I can just see uh, there's like a, a stick there, there's a foot. Exton's one of them. Yeah. And I, I did not pay attention to the call. Mines has the ball, though. Five on five lacrosse. Ricky feeds the ball into the middle of the field for Hardy. Hardy doesn't track it, but he's able to track it down. Spins, makes the feed across to Perkins. Perkins works the ball to Ricky. Ricky sweeps across the top of the box, spins back. Nice defensive recovery there by Vizina, ball goes over the cage, out of bounds, 2.57 left to play. A high lifting shot there. I know his coach wants to see those bouncers. He had a good chance there for a, a good over the hand bounce shot. Mines needs to move. Bounce shot wide of the cage, that's the bounce shot coach wants. Nice job there by Culhan on the shot, just went wide. A little under three minutes left in the first, uh, third quarter. Yeah, see, I'm not the it, only one that does it. it it's contagious. 
Mines threw the ball away out of bounds far side. Restart is going to come on that far side. Worked into the middle of the field for Dick. He'll carry across midfield. Sorry, that's Lazar. Lazar feeds Welch at the top of the box. 220. Coach Harris wants a controlled possession, quality shot here. Late in the third. Opportunity to extend the lead to six. There's a shot, save made by Melvin. Ball comes loose out in front of the cage. 50-50 ground ball is going to be flipped over the crossbar and chased down by Dodd for the Lynx. Ball works into the middle of the field. Welch spins, dishes Lazar. 98 seconds left to play, third Lazar. Dodging down the left hand side alley, bounces one. That shot finds the pipe, comes back up top, and it's going to end up in the cage. Spit on that one and just couldn't keep it out of the cage. A nice job of just scooping up the laundry and sending it toward the net. You can really tell how, uh, how much of a cerebral player Lazar is. Look at that shot placement. He was really going for that far side. And then it, the behind the back kind of bounces there and slowly bounces it, in. And it actually, I think, deflected off of the pole. Of yeah, of the potentially. Pole. There's kind of a mess there trying to pull that out. But Lazar's shot placement, that was the, the real highlight of that, that uh, goal there. He started that. Back to the face-off X we go. The pull this time goes two mines, but uh, the draw ends up being won by the Lynx. Welch gets the touch. It was a nice draw by Evan Wong. Over and back. Throw the ball away. Yeah, the, 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 that's something about Bo is that he's such a dominant player, but he's not always in the game. Uh, mentally, he's, he just makes some of those, those lapses sometimes. Rick, Ricky rattles one off of a defender out in front of the cage. The ground ball is going to be scooped up by Wong. Wong gets above GLE. He's going to bounce one. Ends up in the crease. Give the ball back to the Lynx. Got to be smart about that. Wong needs to start looking for his teammates. Look for those skip passes. Next and dodges downhill. Tries to do it all himself. Good hard play, Exton and his defender uh, congratulating each other on the hard play. That's home shell. They do have respect for, for one another. Two good teams that have earned their way to this tournament. Welch has the ball up top with 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Don't forget coming up right after, not right after this one, but at four o'clock mountain time, eight, uh, six o'clock on the East Coast. It's going to be a rematch between Colorado State and Utah. Colorado State giving number two Utah all they could handle in their first meeting out in Fort Collins. Utah coming out with an overtime win, and that's the end of the third quarter here. Nine to three, our third quarter score. This is the RMLC Championship Tournament presented by Prodigy Network. Available on Lacrosse All-Stars and Lacrosse Talk Radio. I'm Greg Gorenlian, known as Greg Beast. I played for the New York Lizards. I just retired from the MLL, and I face off for Team USA. An elite level face off man looks for a couple different things. First thing is the pinch points of the head, the flex points, how it wraps around the ball. The second thing you look for is the scoop. Is it rigid enough? And can it help you get an extra couple ground balls? The third thing is you want durability. You don't want to have to go buy a new head every few games, so this head basically encompasses all three of those. The Faceoff Academy put Command X's heads and their prototypes through the grinder. They lasted. They lasted throughout the entire grind. They 
flexed uh, exactly how we wanted them to. So not only were they pliable, not only were they uh, durable, but they were also used in a lot of different facets. So it, it came out with a, a pretty good rating. The UA Command X, dive under, take over. Founded in 2009, Lacrosse Talk Radio has the most live and up-to-date coverage of the fastest sport on two feet. Whether you're listening to one of our over 200 live youth, high school, collegiate, or professional game broadcasts, or our regional specialty shows, Lacrosse Talk Radio gives you access and insight to your favorite teams and players. Visit us at lacrossetalkradio.com for our broadcast schedules in the Rocky Mountain, tri-state and mid-atlantic regions lacrosse talk radio the official voice of the mcla clyde field utah valley university dan matthews dave leach the cu denver Lynx, and the colorado no school of mines well, what do you mean it's too short i mean it it's colorado school of mines we've got we're gonna have a penalty we've got a stick that's too short apparently so somebody mm. is going to uh, be spending three minutes in the sin bin. And I think it's going to be Drew Lazar. Does Lazar have any other penalties in this game? He does, right? He's got one, one or two. So he's one more away, I believe, from... Uh, so five minutes total. Being ejected. That's considered a personal. Three-minute stick penalty is considered a personal penalty. We will get the call from the officials here momentarily. There's a lot of conversation going down, and it's literally like a half inch short according to Coach Jonathan Harris. And I think that was just one of the uh, officials' mandatory stick checks at the end of a period, that they just picked a stick and here we go. Just good refereeing. CU Denver's not happy about it. They've got a six goal lead. What a huge break for the School of Mines. That's three minutes where they can score as many times as they want and that is not released. Right. The question is, can they capitalize? That could really give them a chance to pull this game within reach. Mines lost a 14-10 decision to CU Denver earlier this season. CU Denver takes a six-goal lead here into the fourth. Wong is going to start with the ball at the top. No face-off. <coughs> and I believe that it's Lazar who is going to be sitting in, I don't see anybody in the box right now. I don't know if it's Lazar or if it is Exton. Looks like it's Lazar heading to the cage. Yeah. And he's it, gonna have to find a different cross to play with the rest of the game. That's right. A cross that doesn't belong to him. That stick will stay at the table for the remainder of the game. That ball goes wide. What a shot. And the shot by Broussard. Works to Hardy. Back down low to Culhane. Now into the middle of the field, Broussard. Broussard feeds far side Wong. Wong spins, kicks it back up top for Broussard. Ball goes wide. Turnover mines. That's trouble. I just realized that Broussard is a freshman. And he is really making an impact in this game. Yeah, he's been solid. Might not be on the score sheet, but he really is playing well especially for his first RMLC tournament experience. Welch got the touch. Exton, patient as always. Two minutes left on the penalty. Exton's gonna be double teamed. He gets away from the double team. Almost seems to be enjoying the double team. Yeah, Zach Sila there defensively oh. pokes the ball away. It stays in bounds. Pushed out. And then what a great play by Exton pushing up. Out of bounds. He's a smart player. Yeah, he's heady. He is. He's heady. He's, his game's always right there. So, Exton swims up through the double team, runs over another defender. Ball comes loose. Now he's being held. That's going to be a penalty on Mines. That's going to give uh, CU Denver a man advantage now 
um, five on four lacrosse and with as crafty as some of these players are I wouldn't be giving CU Denver a man up with a five on four. No that's just uh, that's a lot gives, of space to gives them a lot of space. Let's go Trev. But you can really see uh, Mines is in great shape for this this tournament. They're uh, their players are really well conditioned. Uh, they don't seem nearly as tired as uh, CU Denver does. So 90 seconds left on the uh, non-releasable penalty. They'll spend 60 of that man up working five on. It's five on five, I believe. Why is it five on five? Yeah, five on five now. Yep. They said it was too short. That evens it up. That was three minutes? Probably like this much. I got, I, I Conversation about the stick going on in the box. There's a feed out front and easy goal for Welch. That's just a product of being five on five and, and having a little bit more room. Uh, you know, Welch was was not really moving. He was just standing there on the crease waiting for his teammate to find him. Um, you know, if you've got more players on the on the on the field at the time and, and Mines is able to play more of a team defense, maybe he's not as wide open on the crease. I'm sure the goalie's frustrated about that. 13-17 left to go here in the fourth quarter. It's 10-3. Favor of CU Denver. And Mines' penalty is released. CU Denver is still man down. Rare face-off win today for Mines. Don't forget coming up uh, at 4 o'clock Mountain Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Colorado State and Utah. That one will be followed by BYU and Colorado. BYU, the number two seed in this tournament, taking on the third seed, University of Colorado Buffaloes. Solid effort by Broussard there to get that ball out, get his Ricky teammates. Ricky finds the back of the net from the Ooh. far side. Makes it 10-4, 12.44 left to play. Ricky's a natural lefty, and uh, he's there. And he's been taking those shots all day, just ripping them. And uh, that one connects, top shelf. Spoke to Ricky at a halftime. Uh, I mean, he told me uh, he's actually an, uh, an LSM, um, naturally. And uh, he's playing attack for his team today. They are missing a few players. Uh, actually, they said about half their team is missing because of uh, finals. Ouch. Which is a pretty typical thing for the School of Mines to deal with. A lot of those players put a high emphasis on uh, school projects and exams. As they should. 50-50 ground ball on the faceoff is going to be pulled out by Welch. Is that the first uh, faceoff that Exton has not taken? I believe so. Nice job there by Welch. And honestly, right now, I don't see Exton out on the field. That might be a coach's decision at this point. 12 minutes left. One of your better players, maybe rest him. Maybe he's uh, got something tweaked before the game even. He's sitting on the bench, not feeling well. Yeah, that's, uh, from what we can see, that like would be accurate. Like last night. <laughs> yeah, I had a little food poisoning. Lucky to be here, folks. <laughs> All at the top of the box. Smith. Sorry, not Smith. Perkins has it. He goes far side, Hardy. Hardy's going to feed it back up to Perkins. Perkins. Settle in. Dodge downhill on the far side, makes the feed to Hardy. Hardy into the Good middle look. of the field. That was a great look. Unable to come up with the pass, though, was Robert Harris. Ball still loose out in front of the cage. Finally pulled out. I believe that's Joe Hall for the Lynx. Freshman midfielder. Gets the ball into the offensive zone and into the box for Warlam. Warlam spins, gives the ball up to Lazar. Lazar on the near side. It's going to get doubled. Roussard. Lazar is going to carry behind the cage. 
What a strong statement on Broussard's game. He just took, he is matching up right now with their best offensive player. Shorty on Shorty. Lazar gets top Oof. side and puts it in. What the a net. goal. What a great shot. That defense was superb. Maybe, maybe he didn't need to uh, throw so many checks, but he was right there on his hips pushing him out. Lazar just had that angle. Slipped it right through the five hole. What a shot. That makes our score 11 4. CU Denver Lynx with the lead in their first ever RMLC tournament appearance. So Coach Harris looking to uh, go 1 0 undefeated in tournament play. Their first tournament. Maintain this, and they will get the uh, MCLA's eighth ranked team, the Montana State University Bobcats, tomorrow right here. The RMLC tournament presented by Prodigy Networks. Those broadcasts will be available again on Lacrosse Talk Radio as well as Lacrosse All Stars. I'm really glad that CU Denver ended up joining the league. For a few years there, they were just an independent team. And this is now their second year in the MCLA. And I think it was a very wise decision to make that investment. Call Hayden gives the ball to Wong it ice. Wong picked up by Kalazi. Kalazi bats down Wong's pass. Rosberg scoops it up. <coughs> gives it back to Kalazi. Feed to the middle of the field for Smith. Inside of 10 minutes to play. 11-4 is our score. The Lynx with the lead. <coughs> It does seem like CU Denver is starting to slow the tempo of this game, which may get uh, the Colorado School of Mines an opportunity to get back in this if they can get the ball. Getting the ball is the operative phrase there. Welch has it. He spins, feeds top side for Dick. Dick's going to maintain possession and give the ball back to Welch. Kind of sloppy there by Welch. Not really going after that pass, instead kind of letting it drop in front of him. <coughs> Ball works above goal line extended. Welch feeds the top of the box for Lazar. Nine minutes left to go in this one. 11 to four is our score. Downhill dodge on the near side by Dick. Beats it back to the top of the box, Lazar. Referees looking at each other. We're about to get a timer. There's the timer. Welch has the ball. 30 seconds to shoot it. That'll be kept on the field. Welch has the ball. Skip pass. Step down. Shot. Save made by Melvin. Dick on the shot. Melvin with him step for step. Not really that important of a save. Not even sure if you would consider that a save. Because uh, I'm not sure it would even score, but um, critical in getting his team possession. Colorado State University Rams making their way to the field. Would imagine that the uh, Utes will be turnover momentarily. Feed down low, that ball gets away. It's going to go out of bounds. Mines really needs to settle this. They really need possession. Every possession from here on out should be a goal, and that could put them right back into this game. Owen Schelt starts it up, feeds Melvin. Melvin's going to kick it to the middle of the field for Wong. This would be a great time for Mines to use a timeout here. Colhane makes the feed down low. Wong, Wong bounces it off the goaltender Rosberg. Chases it down behind the cage. Long carries out to the far side behind goal line extended. Drops it up top for Ricky. Ricky moves it outside the box the top side. He's going to make the feed into the middle of the field. Oh, here's a chance. Harris We've got a whistle on the field and time out. out for the Colorado School of Mines. They trail 11-4 here at the RMLC Championships, presented by Prodigy Networks, available on Lacrosse All-Stars and Lacrosse Talk Radio.
I'm Ryan Powell. I'm Brett Hughes. I'm Zach Greer. I'm Brian Silka. We're, We're the, the Stripes. Stripes. I'm Megan Weiss. I'm Anthony Kelly. Griffin Halliday. Logan Halliday. And we grow the game. And I grow the game. And I grow the game. And we grow the game. And I 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 grow the game, baby. And I grow the game. And I grow the game. We're back at Clyde Field at Utah Valley University. I'm Dan Matthews. This is Dave Leach. So glad you could tune us in today. 11 4 is our score. CU Lynx with the lead. I guess I should call it the CU Denver Lynx. You'll probably get upset with me. 7 11 left to play in this one. Timeout as much as anything was in all likelihood to uh, let the uh, Mines players catch their breath. Both teams with about a five-man bench. That uh, makes for a difficult process, especially when you're talking about 85 degrees, which is what it's been today, a beautiful day here. It's very important that Mines gets to whatever coach just drew up. You don't have a lot of time to move this ball around and waste, because you need to get this goal and you need to get six more in the next six minutes. Yeah, looking at a goal a minute right now. Very much possible, but you need to get to it. Yeah, you know that the Lynx are gonna just let the air out of the ball every time they've got their, their sticks right. on it. So dodging downhill is Wong. He pulls it out on the far side wing. Fires to Hardy. Hardy bounces one wide of the cage. Call Hain there for the backup. Well done. Tucker, you're hot. Well done. Watch that drive. Tucker, fire. Call Hain dodges from X ball, comes up top. What a great play defensively by the Lynx out in front. Perkins couldn't get a shot off. Might have considered that a push from behind with possession. Feet up top, that one's gonna come out to midfield. It's kept on the proper side of midfield and now it rolls over. Nice job there by the Lynx. They're gonna get their sticks on it. They'll let the air out of the ball. Patrick Tom out of Chatfield High Ooh, School. Oh, Mines is aggressive here. They have to be. They have to get rid of that ball and they did. Nice job there. 50-50 ground ball, Wong can't scoop it up. It's going to be scooped up by Hardy, though. Hardy oh. coming across midfield, swims through two players. Nice job staying on side by Dodd. Here comes Culhane heading to the cage, makes the feed down low for Wong. Wong fires far side, a great shot, scoring the goal. Great shot placement, terrific shot placement. My coaching days, I would talk to my players about shooting for the triangles. If you're looking at the goal, you're looking directly at it, you see one big triangle behind the goalie. Here he sees the, the far triangle of the net, and he goes right to it. That's a perfect shot. That's exactly where you're supposed to shoot when you're at that angle. Very smart player. Wong came into the day with 18 goals and four assists on the season. Culhane's been pretty quiet today. He had 20 goals coming into today, the team's leading scorer. I noticed that uh, we are missing one of their leading scorers in Elias Petsalas, a senior at the Colorado School of Mines. I would imagine he is one of those uh, finals casualties and graduation on the horizon. You cannot have a turnover the right there in that position. It's fine if you're gonna win that face off and, and run back, but you gotta send that to your goalie. He hesitated and CU Denver got possession. Is that Exton back in the game? Yeah, Exton's back in the game. Far side, you know, scoop it up with one hand. And we've got a timeout, this time for CU Denver. Don't forget coming up, Colorado State and Utah at 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 6 p.m. on the East Coast. We'll step aside and take a break. These are the RMLC Championships presented by Prodigy Networks. My name is Pat Young. I started my college career at University of Maryland, Baltimore County and finished up at University of Maryland College Park. I currently play for the Ohio Machine. The shaft is the Meso, and obviously when you look at it, it's got a really sleek look to it. 
black on black is pretty smooth. Feel it, it's not too rigid, got a little bit of a grit to it. It's very durable, but it's pretty light. It's got a little bit of a flex to it, so it puts a little bit more on your shot. UA Meso Composite, balanced, battle tested. We are back at uh, Clyde Field at the University, not the University of Utah, we're at Utah Valley University. I'm Dan Matthews, he's Dave Leach. It's an 11-5 game with five minutes to play here in the second RMLC Division II semifinal game. Getting a little bit of cloud coverage now, which is nice. I don't like those sort of darkish clouds behind us. Yeah, not too bad. Though. But it doesn't look too foreboding. It's a beautiful day here in the uh, greater Salt Lake City area. Yeah, I think the overcast is well welcomed. So you Denver's going to have the ball on the far side of the field. Exton will start it by kicking it up top for Lazar. And here's where they force Mines to play them. Yeah, I mean, Lazar's just going to walk it over to the near side, give it to Carrasco. Carrasco will give it back to Lazar, pressing out defensively now is Lambert for Mines. Lazar will step through the box, take Lambert with him. Burned about 35 seconds off the clock. Hidden ball trick. Ball comes out in the cross of Carrasco. Carrasco's feet, he turns it over. Turnover. Dodd can't come up with the pass. Ball a restart. Mines will work it up the field. Carter Hone gives it in the middle of the field to Broussard. Broussard forced out of bounds. Drops the ball to Perkins. Perkins gets the twig. Here comes Exton. Dodging past GLE around to the far side of the cage. He'll pull it out into the far side corner. Ball works to the top now. Lazar has it. He'll hang on to it on the far side. Lambert there. I'm sorry, that is not Lambert. That is D'Esposito. So right now, Lazar's got a shorty on him. Lambert's actually on the sideline. Lazar out by midfield. Clock rapidly approaching three minutes left in this one. 11 5 our score. Barring a miracle, CU Denver will advance to take on Montana State tomorrow at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. on the East Coast. The game again will be here on Lacrosse All-Stars and Lacrosse Talk Radio. 2.33 left to play. Lazar gets called for a ward. Turnover, two and a half minutes left. Got a big flag thrown out to midfield. Lazar is going to get called for a penalty. It was Broussard working the clear. Ball ends up across midfield, big hits. Going on down inside. Nice job by the uh, Lynx players, keeping uh, Welch from going after the man that hit him. But just a couple long. minutes, just a couple minutes left in their season. Mines is uh, they're going to remind these these Lynx players that that they're playing a tough team and uh, that they're not they're not exactly laying down and rolling over. 11-5. It's a respectable score. Um, Mines is starting to get a little chippy. Here we go, Mines has the man, extra man advantage here. 
might be able to make this a, a five goal game. First beating was a four goal game. Lynx came out on top in that one. Works at the top. Sent far side, Diaz Pazita back up top for Wong. Wong feeds Culhane. Culhane works it. Hardy fires one low to low. Rosberg Foot tracked save. that one all the way. CU Denver with possession. Two minutes left to play. Timeout, CUD. We'll step aside. We'll be back for the conclusion of this one right after this. My name is Pat Young. I started my college career at University of Maryland, Baltimore County and finished up at University of Maryland College Park. I currently play for the Ohio Machine. The shaft is the Mesa, and obviously when you look at it, it's got a really sleek look to it. Black on black is pretty smooth. Feel it, it's not too rigid, got a little bit of a grit to it. It's very durable, but it's pretty light. It's got a little bit of a flex to it, so it puts a little bit more on your shot. UA Meso Composite, balanced, battle tested. shot by our cameraman up here on the lift for us of the Wasatch Mountain Range. Back for the last one minute, 55 seconds of this contest. CU Denver looks to be advancing to our Division II championship tomorrow at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Eastern, where they'll face the MCLA Division II's eighth ranked Montana State University Bobcats. Exton on the carry for the Lynx. Cuts through the top of the box. Shovels it to Lazar. Lazar steps in. He's going to run around in a circle. Kicks the ball far side for Welch. CU Denver will look to completely take the air out of this ball for the balance of the game. The question is, when does the uh, timer on come? Ball gets kicked up top for Lazar. He's marked up defensively by Hoover. Lazar, yep. the downhill dodge, feeds the middle of the field for Carrasco. Carrasco pulls it back out up top. For 67 seconds left to play. CU Denver taking the air out of this one. They will advance to the RMLC Division II championship game against Montana State. Timer is on. So at this point, they will hang on to it for about 25 seconds and roll it into a corner. Or take a shot. Or lose the ball. Ball got turned over. Mines will work the clear. Turned over on the clear. Oh, Mines has it. One last opportunity, 33 seconds to go. Wong has it at the top of the box. Inside 30 seconds to play. Feet comes near side, Perkins. I'm not sure they're aware of the time. 15 seconds left. Wong up top. That's Evan Wong. He takes a shot. That one goes wide in the cage, out of bounds with six seconds to play in this one. So in a little over an hour from now, it'll be Colorado State and Utah. Right here on Lacrosse All-Stars and Lacrosse Talk Radio. A big thank you to our crew from Prodigy Networks here on this one, your final score. 11-5 in favor of CU Denver. CU Denver will move on to face Montana State. Anticipations out of that game, Dave? Oh, that should be a barn burner. Uh, both these, these teams are uh, high powered, they're strong, they're fast, they're, they're in great shape. Um, Montana State obviously has a little bit of an edge just because of their experience and, and veteran nature of, of their team. Uh, but CU Denver is, uh, they're, they're proving some things this year. It's only their second season in the MCLA, and uh, they are one game away from the national championship. And I hope that's not lost on them, and that they 
they eat well, they sleep well tonight, and we see a great one tomorrow. Utah and Colorado State coming up here in a little over an hour on Lacrosse All-Stars and Lacrosse Talk Radio. For Dave Leach and the entire crew at Prodigy Networks, I'm Dan Matthews. Until 4 o'clock, so long, everybody. My name is Pat Young. I started my college career at University of Maryland, Baltimore County and finished up at University of Maryland College Park. I currently play for the Ohio Machine. The shaft is the Mesa, and obviously when you look at it, it's got a really sleek look to it. Black on black is pretty smooth. Feel it, it's not too rigid, got a little bit of a grit to it. It's very durable, but it's pretty light. It's got a little bit of a flex to it, so it puts a little bit more on your shot. UA Meso Composite, balanced, battle tested. Tribal West is the first name in lacrosse out west. For more than 15 years, Tribal West has been gearing up beginners to ballers. Our online store is super easy, and we save you time and money. And team stores, let us do your work. Our deals for both men's and women's MCLA teams are flat out laxtastic. We just made that up. Sublimated unis made in the USA and delivered on time. Tribal West, proud to be family owned and player operated. Tribal West, look good, play better. I'm Eric Law, I went to the University of Denver and I played professional lacrosse for the Denver Outlaws. This is the UA Command 2.0. I really like the new design of the thinner scoop at the top to help with ground balls uh, and, and the same thing in the back with the flare to help with ground balls as well. Uh, the pocket, it, it forms just a nice easy pocket right in the middle. Um, I also love how light it is. We've been in the sun all day, it still doesn't get that soupy bendy feeling. Um, also, what I really like the new addition of is the uh, side rail pockets for the shooters which doesn't go right in there, which I think uh, is a brilliant design. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests. From award-winning business and STEM to performing arts programs, there's a place for you. A place for you. A place for you at UVU. A place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. My name is Pat Young. I started my college career at University of Maryland, Baltimore County and finished up at University of Maryland College Park. I currently play for the Ohio Machine. Uh, this is the Under Armour Banshee. It's the uh, mid-level lacrosse cleat. What I like about it is it's got a low cleat feel, but with the protection of a mid to high cleat. I'm usually a guy who likes to protect my ankles, but I don't like to lose the mobility and feel like I'm wearing a heavy cleat. UA Banshee, untouchable, unstoppable.
I'm Greg Gurenlian, known as Greg Beast. I played for the New York Lizards. I just retired from the MLL, and I face off for Team USA. An elite level face-off man looks for a couple different things. The first thing is the pinch points of the head, the flex points, how it wraps around the ball. The second thing you look for is the scoop. Is it rigid enough? Can it help you get an extra couple ground balls? The third thing is you want durability. You don't want to